Hello everyone, I'm so happy you're here with me today. I haven't done a game review in a while. Honestly, probably since my last cooking game video, which has been a long time. So I thought I'd review this new one that released last month. I love cooking games, so I've had this one on my wish list since I found it on Steam. As of this video's recording, there are 166 reviews resulting in a very positive rating. Game is a little steep at $29.99, but let's see if the price tag is justified in the gameplay. The game came with free DLC content that would originally be $4.99, and upon going to the DLC screen it's obvious they will be adding more. Pizza DLC and some other type of DLC. It seems like for most cooking games a pizza DLC is usually the first to be added. Anyway, first going into the game there is an almost 2 minute long opening sequence of cinematic shots of food, different chefs, and customers eating. I think it kind of sets the mood for the game and honestly I think it's a nice aesthetic with the kind of cartoony looking characters and overall animated feel. The character creator consists of selecting from a few different basic facial shapes, changing skin tones, muscle mass, overall body type, different hairstyles and colors, eye color, and makeup or facial hairstyles. You can also give yourself arm tattoos if you wish, which I thought was interesting. You can then select from a couple different uniform types, opt to have a logo of your choice on it from some pre-selected options, and change their colors as well. Overall, I honestly think the characters themselves are pretty cute, very reminiscent of a Sims 4 character, although I don't know why she has her mouth open all weird constantly. The first task is to speak to my associate, Kasim. We are opening the restaurant in three days, so I need to practice the first meal. This goes into a four day long tutorial on how the cooking mechanics work, introducing new elements each day. I liked this aspect of slowly introducing new concepts throughout the four day time period because it wasn't overwhelming. Upon first stepping into the kitchen and interacting with things, it reminded me of Cooking Simulator but slightly less complicated. Or so I thought. The first meal you create is steak and fries. You're introduced to the mechanics of preparing the ingredients before you start cooking because the cooking itself is almost like a mini game. It is put into three sections of cooking time, each section having things you should do to create a high score. Initially, you're told exactly when to put in your ingredients and when to flip the meat so it's really easy. Well, the second part of the tutorial, with the exact same dish, you don't get your hand held so closely. And seasonings are added into the mix. Seasonings have their own special time to be added too, and you use something called Chef Sense to see if you need to add more of any particular seasoning. I found this system to work really well. This particular part I failed over and over, mainly because I couldn't figure out why the shallots weren't being counted as being in the pan at the right cooking section. I wasted so much meat doing this recipe over and over. I decided to check the recipe book again to see if I missed something, and apparently I did. The shallots weren't supposed to be added in the beginning, they were meant to be added in the second section of cooking. That's where the question mark next to the shallots while cooking came from. I guess I hadn't discovered the proper time to add them yet, even though I had just cooked this exact recipe a few moments earlier and the shallots were added first. I don't know, it was a small detail that wasn't addressed and it was enough to hold me back for at least a little while. Once I figured out what I had been missing, I got the dish perfect the first time. Once I took it over to the plating area, I found this really cool mechanic I've never seen in any other cooking game. Plating. You can choose to plate the food however you want to and save it for that dish every time you serve it. You can also have multiple variations of the same dish saved. This gives a lot of creative freedom to the dishes you serve and, as I said before, something I've not seen in other cooking games. It makes a lot of sense to have something like this in a gourmet kitchen type setting since plating is a huge part of that culture. The next day, I meet Max, who is a delivery girl for a food supplier. She will be who I order my produce from. This introduces the research table and the game's XP system, called KP, which you can use to buy new recipes to learn. Recipes are also blocked by your character level, which is raised with XP at the end of each dinner service. You earn KP with every dish you cook. The higher the quality or more sophisticated the dish, the more KP and money you earn. By looking at the research book, there are a lot of recipes to unlock and be learned. I learned a Capri salad and filet of sole. Already I could see exactly how complicated these dishes could become. The salad was easy enough as I only had to cook the dressing for it, the other items were just 
chopped and then tossed together with a little salt. This time around, I checked my recipe book often as to not get anything wrong. I kept seeing prompts on certain items that they could be prepared and then stored in the fridge to be used later. I had a feeling that would play a big part in running things once the restaurant was officially opened up. Before you can add new recipes to your menu, you have to cook them at least once. I only got a grade A and not an A plus on the filet of sole. I didn't realize this means that the highest grade you can get while cooking it for customers would be locked in that A rating. So it's important to get the dish perfect before moving on. It's nice that you have the ability to pin up to five recipes, which shows the ingredients and different steps each recipe needs up in the top corner of your screen. This also allows you to quickly grab ingredients from the pantry by holding down A or X on a PlayStation controller, rather than having to select each ingredient individually, saving time. Some foods require being stirred regularly so that they don't stick to the pan, such as the sauce for the Capri salad, while others may require a pan to be thoroughly heated before starting the cooking process, like with the sole, or even water to be boiling before tossing the food in, such as with the green beans. For the sauce, it's executed by way of a meter that slowly grows over time. If you let it get to the top, the food will be ruined. The meter resets each time you stir the food. I found that this was a very smart way to do this. It isn't overly annoying and adds to the realism as well as to the multitasking element that cooking games often offer. This game is unique in the type of cooking game it is. It's like Cooking Simulator, but with the time management and multitasking elements that Cooking Sim was lacking, making it more stressful and challenging and less like a sandbox. It isn't just cooking meals, it's also running a restaurant. On the third day of the tutorial, you are introduced to the blackboard where you will select the dishes being offered for the day of service. There is a daily special that will be more likely to be ordered. As your restaurant gains prestige, customers will expect more highly classed dishes. If you cook a certain category of dish often, your restaurant will start to earn the reputation of specializing in that type. Once the blackboard is set, you go to the storeroom where you are able to order the goods you need today. You can choose to buy locally, which raises your responsibility level, or go to the cheaper route but lose responsibility. Ordering internationally is frowned upon even though it is cheaper. It was at this point I got a surprise. You can go into build mode and actually move your kitchen around or add and remove equipment. You can change the kitchen to suit the daily menu, depending on what you do or don't need. You can also go into the dining room and decorate it by changing out tables and adding themed decor using the money you made from service to buy more items. If you have enough of the same type of themed decor, it will create a certain mood for the room. This system is exactly like that of Plate Up. So many more elements were added during this third day of the tutorial. There is a lot of detail. You store your food that you've ordered from Max in the back freezers or fridges, and you can check their quality on the notepad in the storeroom. Naturally, the food quality decays over time and they will eventually expire. So when you pick up your crate to grab the goods for the night service, you can choose to get produce based off the best quality or nearest to expire. This was the first time prepping for the evening was introduced. I was able to chop all the vegetables, prepare the filleted and floured fish and set them in the fridge and even pre-cook the green beans and set them on the warmer before opening the restaurant. Despite the prepping though, the first day of service, that wasn't even a real service, was extremely stressful. Customers get impatient and will lower your score if you don't serve them quickly, making time management really come into play here. Not to mention there is so much to remember between all the different recipes and needed ingredients. You have to remember when to do certain tasks for certain dishes and you have to act very quickly, so it's easy to get jumbled. At the end of the service, you get a recap of how you did, complete with the customer's thoughts, how much they tipped, and the amount of XP you earned. After the third day of the tutorial, the restaurant is officially opened. Luckily, this was when it was explained that you can adjust the settings to your liking of playstyle. You can have a calm service where customers won't get angry, fewer customers, recipe reminders, or cooking assistant, which means your dishes will never fail or burn. This can make the playstyle very much more relaxing and less of the time management, stressful type of gameplay, depending on the style of gameplay you prefer. And you can change them at any time. I like that you can make the experience be as easy or challenging as you like. The more I played this game, the more I fell in love with it and felt ever more excited. Each day starts with you using your morning to prepare your kitchen, order ingredients, research recipes, and overall prepare for the shift to begin. In the office is a catalog where you can buy so many varying items, from more stoves to meat slicers, mixers, and other neat equipment. 
You can also buy new decor, pages and pages of decor for your restaurant, including so many types of plates. You can also get new clothes, hairstyles, and tattoos for yourself. The PC in the office is where you can view stats for your restaurant, customers, and staff. Yes, staff. When I saw that I would be allowed staff at some point, I got really excited. The restaurant also has a cleanliness meter, so it's very important to keep it clean. From the PC, you can change your restaurant's name and view other important information. On opening day, Kasim goes from tutorial instructor to my employee, although all he can do is clean the restaurant at first. I prepped better this time, making the sauce with a Capri salad ahead of time. Ari became my head server and I gained some serving staff, although you don't interact with them. I learned the hard way that as you're prepping for the dinner service, anything you have currently cooking, not in a warmer or in a fridge, will not save once you open the front door. Getting a second fridge is important because even though it looks like you can use all the shelves in it, you can't. Only 12 items can be stored per fridge. Another thing to note, you don't buy individual vegetables, meats, dairy products, or grains. You buy them in helpings and it automatically unlocks the needed food. For example, I unlocked a recipe that needed carrots, but I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to buy a carrot. It was later I learned that by buying extra vegetables for my dinner service that a carrot was then available in my pantry. I used the morning to make the new dish so that the following day I could offer that dish for dinner. One major complaint I have are the controls. I played on a controller because a review I read said that playing on the keyboard was tough because of all the different keybinds. Well, it's the same on controller. There are many unnecessary button combinations being used for actions that could easily just be A or X on a PlayStation controller. For example, to play something on a cutting board, it's right trigger. To select the item you want to cut, it's square. Then it's X again to activate the chopping. Then it's right stick to chop. It just seems like a lot of unnecessary steps when you could easily just be spamming a button, but maybe that's kind of the point. Make it where you're not spamming a button. I don't know. My time with this game was really fun. I didn't get to unlock a whole lot more of the recipe, but the ones that I did slowly unlock did get more and more complicated. I could see how this game could provide hours upon hours of gameplay. It does worry me a little bit that it might get repetitive because even though the ingredients change, a lot of the mechanics pretty much stay the same. I like that the game allows different types of players to enjoy it. For me, I like the fast paced stress of having to get a dish out on time before a customer is upset, but that's not for everyone and this game allows that. Ultimately, if you like cooking games, you're looking for a new one, I strongly recommend this game. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know down in the comments. If there are any other games you'd like me to look over and review, please let me know that as well. I hope I'll see you again soon. Bye.